Guys, what is up? Welcome back to a brand new video. So today I just wanted to talk about convict cichlids. So I know this is um now I noticed um that there's actually not that much information on them. You know, I've kept them for about a year or so. Um obviously they're not my favourite fish, they're not the most ideal fish, but they are very, very easy to look after. They breed very well, like extremely well. Like you could put these these little buggers in petrol and they'd breed, like it's it's actually like, you know, it's more of an issue trying to stop them from breed than in breeding than it is. Like I just sold, I had to um sell off a batch of batch of convicts actually. I uh, I couldn't really sell them or something like that, and um I gave away a couple for free, and then the, another guy offered me a bunch of goldfish for them. So I thought, you know, why not? You know, so I just got this tank and put a got given a couple a few goldfish for them. So I don't know what I'll do with them up at the moment, but yeah, I just got them in there for now. Probably put them outside. In some kind of pond. I was going to feed them to my Murray cod, but I thought, nah, you know, might as well. Might keep them, you know. They look alright. You know, a lot of few people, quite a few people like goldfish, like the look of them. So anyway, back to the back to this video. Sorry, I didn't realize how much I was rambling. Um, so let's start with their tank mates. So convicts go with quite a few few fish, but I tend to usually put them with their with the same like species. So other American uh, other American cichlids. So, you know, Oscars, Texas Cichlids, Jack Dempsey's, obviously Silver Dollars, of course, because uh, I've got a couple in there. Um, all of the ones in here seem to go pretty well with it. How, however, however, when you get a smaller, um, when you get them smaller, they're less aggressive. So, so I had this one and this one smaller. And um, however, this one I bought when he was large. And he's very aggressive with the oster, tries to attack it. So I need to do something about that. But obviously at the moment he's not that bad. As soon as the lights go off, not very aggressive. And he usually gets his own back from the Oscar. Like he tries to pick a fire with the Oscar and the Oscar ends up beating him up. Like he gets he gets bashed a lot. He's a little cocky little bugger. But um, this one, however, is almost the same size as this one. Just about. You tell it's a female because it's a different bump on its head and the different kind of colorations of it. Um... And that's another thing, given it's a male, it's a bit more aggressive. But as you can see, this convict here is just the same size, and it's got no issues. And this one's, no, it's, it's, if you look at it, it's like, it's, it's not super bad in, in the terms of, um, like, it's not super much smaller, but, um, they have no issues with any of the other fish. So, again, I'd recommend you buy them small and introduce them with all the other fish, if you know what I mean. Um... I have to admit, stingray does balance out the aggression a bit. A lot of the other fish tend to be a bit scared of the stingray, but wary of it. So they all kind of team up in a way to, you know, be defensive of it. Obviously, stingrays are very, very docile fish. You know, they don't do much wrong. All right, so now I'm going to talk about um, about what they eat. So what I like to feed them is I just feed them the same thing I feed my Oscar, the cichlid staple diet, uh, medium pellets. Um, usually when I'm feeding my stingray, um, I, I, I tend to feed them a lot of the carnivore pellets, but, um, obviously every now and again you get live food, but they take a lot of it, because I'm telling you what, convicts will eat anything, even live earthworms, like night crawlers and all that, love them, um, blood worms, black worms, they, they, they love them, they, they, like, you know, I feed black worms just some, sometimes for the silver dollars to give them something to eat, and the smaller fish, convicts still eat them, anything. When the Oscars finish eating, like you know, he's had a fair bit. Convicts are still gone. They eat like crazy. So um, yeah, you can feed them most things that fish will eat. To be honest, it takes the stingrays foods a lot, little buggers. Okay, so now I wanted to talk about breeding. So I know that I was talking about this before about how they breed like very easy. Like as I said, you could breed them in bloody petrol. You can now you can you could have them outside the water and they'd breed. So um, how to get them to breed? It's quite simple. You know, chuck them in the, put them in the tank. Put it with the heater. Usually, you know, when there's not as much aggression, so then like, obviously they're not as much scared. And um, I recommend, you know, if you want them to breed really well, obviously they'll breed it with just a male and a female, and you can select breed them and all. But what I, if I was going to breed them, what I'd do is um, is three females, one male. Because as you can see, just the, the males are very aggressive. So, yeah, three females, one male. I've ever got two females in here with the male. I'm trying to balance out the aggression. I might actually have to get a couple more females, but... To be honest, I'd rather get a few more Oscars. I love my Oscar. Um, amazing fish. That and the flower horn's pretty cool fish. I do like the flower horn. Yeah, I don't know what's going on in that glare there, but anyway. I do like the flower horn. Um, so, yeah, so, you know, 
that they're, they're not that hard to breed. You know, these ones have bred quite a bit. They like they tend to breed over the flower pots a lot. Like they lay their eggs inside the flower pots or on them. Um, the, the good thing is, um, usually, usually in this tank, I've put like I've got the Jack Dempsey and stuff and the Oscar, and usually they'll eat the eggs, or especially the silver dolls and the Texas cichlids. They tend to eat the eggs before they can hatch, which is good. But I originally had them just a tank like this, yeah. Um, just a few of them when I was just trying to get my Oscar used to. I had the Oscar, the Silver Dollars, and my Stingray. And, um, I've, I always had the Jack Dempsey in there. Sex of Cichlids I got new, actually, but I recently bought them. But, um, I had them, in, had them in just this tank, and they were breeding like crazy. So, as long as you balance it out, you can stop them from breeding. But to make them breed is very easy. They, you know, I'd, I'd compare them to almost guppies in how easy they breed. Like, they're, they're actually probably easier, you know, or, or the same, maybe. And that's probably also explains why this why they're fairly cheap to buy. You can get a small one for about five to ten dollars. They're not that expensive, and they're from the local aquarium. Um, so that's that's that. So now I'm going to talk about the water parameters. Well, the way the water parameters like and the water parameters and like the heater, the like the temperature and all that stuff. So convicts, unlike these other fish, are actually more hardy than most of them. You know, even, I think, it, probably even more hardy than the Oscar. And, like, people know how hardy the Oscars are. Um, so, what what I recommend is I keep all, all my tanks, my flower horns, even even the bloody goldfish one, I keep them at um, a solid 7 um, pH level. Um, just because that's pretty good. It's nice and neutral and all that. And I try to keep it around 27, 28 degrees, as you can see there. So it, it usually bounces in between there, and depending on the room temperature, sometimes it gets hot. On a really hot day, it'll get like all the way up to 30 or something. And they still go fine, all, all the fish goes fine. But um, I keep, try to keep mine at 27, um, 28, because given it's in the shed, I've got it like insulated and stuff, you know what I mean? But um, yeah, I try to keep it around that. Another thing is um, they need a, a decent, like they need aeration. I wouldn't say you need like an extreme amount, but like, you know, because even having this just out of the water, like that, just that's enough aeration for them. I just have this in here because the, st the sting, the stingray, the Oscar, all, all of them I seem to have a need a fair bit of aeration. All the ones that tend to have you know um, gills where they need water constantly running on it. So you either have a lot of flow in the water or aeration or a bit of both, which is what I do. I've got the flow from um, you know the output from my filter, which I will do in a video on that filter. Um, it's homemade, and um, and I do a bit of aeration there as well just to keep it good, and that that keeps it nice and healthy if you know what I mean. Um, so yeah, that's, that's about it, to be honest. That's the parameters I like to keep it, you know. I put a couple of plants in there, give the aeration and reduce the ammonia, but that's more because of the stingray, because given it's, um, the stingrays pee a lot, given that, you know, how much, um, ammonia they produce. So, yeah, that's about all. Um, let me know in the comments. I'd love to know any other videos you'd like to see me do, because, like, literally anything you rec recommend me to do, um, I'll do. Uh, I might do a whole video on all of them. Um, what I want to do, what I do want to do, is um, actually um, get a wider four foot. Um, so this is a four foot by one and a half, and I want to get a, probably a four foot by two foot just for the, to help the stingray out. Soon I'm, I'm actually going to be getting an eight foot tank, but we'll put them inside. So hopefully, fingers crossed about that, that'll be good. Um, just you know, getting it um, from here, and um, flower horn seems like to. I might actually do a video on the flower horn, you know. But anyway, just let me know. Just give me a comment what you'd like to see, any questions, anything, happy to answer them. Anyway, thanks for watching. Until next time, peace.